So, Andrea's inside talking to Kate. You play with fire, Lee, you're gonna get burned. What you want here, Sebastian? She seemed so angry. Everything was all right when I left this morning. She's angry because I fired her. What? It had to be done. Things were getting dangerous. Dangerous? You fool. You just made it fatal with a stunt like that. I had everything under control. Oh, not from where I stood. She probably thinks that I told you to get rid of her. That's why she's so angry. She's in there right now getting back at me. I'm sorry I didn't get here before the ceremony was performed. Why? Well, Mrs. Carruthers, when you hear what I have to say, I think you'll wish that you hadn't gone through with it. Let's stop talking in riddles, shall we? Yes. Your husband and I have been having an affair. It's been going on for weeks now. He told me two nights ago that he wanted to continue after the wedding. Well, that'll be a little difficult now that you've told me. You don't care. I have two questions to ask you. What was your response when he said that to you? Is that really important? <laughs> to me, it is, yes. At the time, I said yes. And, uh, why are you telling me this now? Because he fired me this morning. Oh, I see. So you're doing it to get even? No. I decided if Lee could play that way, then so could I. Another way of saying the same thing. I also felt sorry for you. Entirely unnecessary. I'm beginning to see that. Oh, Lee, figured out why she's here. No, we just felt a little awkward outside, so... I can hardly wait to see how you're going to feel in here. What's going on? Oh, uh, that's your cue, dear. This was your choice, Lee, not mine. Kate, I don't know what she has been saying to you, but I just found out this morning that Sebastian fired her. That should account for some of what she's telling you. Hmm. It's a very interesting story. And it's all so true. Kate, don't be a fool. You're listening to the complaints of a disgruntled ex-employee. Who slept with the boss. That's a lie. I'm sorry you were let go, but Sebastian assures me that he had ample reason. But if you like, I'll be happy to go over the facts with him and even overrule him if I think that he is wrong. But don't do this. It's hurtful and destructive. No, this is telling it like it is. Or at least was. Oh my God, Kate, say something. Now, what day were you looking at next week? Wednesday? No, I've got a schedule here. He's all booked up that day. T Tuesday? Yeah, that sounds fine. Now, you're going to have to call Sebastian about the time and, and also to confirm the appointment later. He's really busy right now, and things are kind of booked up. It's through the end of the campaign. Okay. All righty, we'll hear from me at the end of the week. Right. Bye-bye. Hi. Well, hello. Where is everybody? Gone. Everybody? Mm-hmm. Mr. Carruthers is getting married today. Oh, yeah? Good. Well, in that case... Peter, don't. Somebody might come in. You just said nobody's here. In this office, but there are still people next door. And I can't take the chance. What's wrong? It's been a terrible day. Andrea was fired. Oh, that blonde girl? Mm-hmm. I thought she was somebody important. <laughs> she was. What happened? Well, it's nothing I can really go into. It, it was a personal thing between... There was a personality conflict between her and Mr. Carruthers, and well, it was all pretty unpleasant. Mm. 
You're afraid that's going to happen to you? I hope hey, not. Come on, you're sharp. You're not going to let the same thing happen to you. I hope it's that simple. Well, look, look on the bright side. She's gone. He's going to see how essential you are. He's going to recognize that, and he's going to do anything he can to make you happy. Peter! Hey! What aren't you telling me? Nothing. I mean, I'm telling you everything. This just hasn't been one of those days you want to hold on to and remember, you know? You want to make it one of those days? What are you talking about? I got a surprise for you. Oh, yeah? Well, I... I guess I've been elected to decide who's telling the truth. Quite a bit is riding on this, isn't it? Well, why did you fire her, Sebastian? And please, Andrea, no interruptions. Incompetence. Continual mismanagement of delicate campaign matters. Such as, uh... Well, such as, uh, undiplomatic behavior with community leaders. Uh, indiscreet comments to the press. Oh, first time I ever heard that about Andrea. In fact, I have only heard praise about her work. Well, I was keeping it quiet. No doubt. Kate, this is not true. Please. She's... You know, uh, Andrea, I, uh, I've always been fascinated with women who allow themselves to be drawn into relationships that can't go anywhere. Women who get so little for their emotional investment. You impressed me as being more intelligent than that. If you will excuse me. Kate, no. Ma? Sebastian, get her out of here. What's going on? All right. Do you want to leave voluntarily, or shall I escort you? I've said all I came to say. Say what to who? What just happened in here? Let go of me. Not on your life! Is that Lee? Why would he be leaving? Must be a reason. Well, I'm certainly going to find out what it is. I'm telling you, that's all I know. She showed up at Mother's right before I left, and I gave her directions. And she didn't let you know what she wanted to talk to Kate about? No. And believe me, I tried. She was very mysterious. I wish I'd known she finally got here. Now we'll probably never know what she had to say. Well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Okay, Sebastian. Let's have it. Let's have what? Oh, nothing. Just an explanation about that little scene that happened between Lee, Kate, and Andrea. Well, I don't have one. Sebastian, you know you can't turn the press on and off at your own convenience. Now, we're here to report the events of the day, and we're not going to gloss over something just because it wasn't part of the tidy little package that you prepared. All right, maybe I'll give you a little help. Uh, this afternoon, Andrea Summers presented herself at Kate Phillips' house, only she didn't find Kate Phillips there. She found her daughter, Stacy. And her daughter, Stacy, learned that Andrea had a very important message to deliver before the wedding. Well, it doesn't take much to figure out that one and one and one makes three, and three just happens to be the number that makes a triangle. You print that, and I'll slap a lawsuit on the Chronicle so big that you'll go bankrupt even if you settle out of court. Sebastian, all I have to do is print the events of the day, and the public can make its own decision after that. You still have nothing to say? Andrea got fired. What you saw was just her... Getting even. So why did she get fired? Look, I'm running a congressional campaign. Now, Andrea's a nice girl, but she didn't have the experience I needed. Now, we're getting down to the stretch. That's crucial. I can't afford a weak link in the chain. And how did she try to get even? Well, she concocted some story you know, that, uh, that Lee was marrying Kate for her money. <laughs> That's ridiculous. He has more money than she has. But Andrea wasn't aware of that. Now, you can print this if you want, but it's, it's just some silly incident. Of course, I'm unhappy with Andrea for getting Kate upset, but, uh, well, I, I feel sorry for her. Where's Mother and Lee? Well, uh, that's a long story. Look, can't we give Lee and Kate some, 
some private space. They're the most public couple in Kingsley. Sometimes that kind of pressure sort of releases itself in strange ways. She may be my mother, but she chose this lifestyle and has to accept the consequences that go along with it. You'll have to forgive my sister, Sebastian. She may be a very smart girl, but she's very inexperienced in the ways of men and women. <laughs> Say, I, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm hungry. Now, can't we continue this over that delicious meal that's waiting for us outside? Good idea. Stacy? She'll be there in a minute. So what'd you think? About Sebastian's explanation? Yeah. Not much? Me either. But without any facts, all we have is speculation. Look, um, why don't you go see if you can't uh, get anything more out of Sebastian? And I'm gonna take a walk. Maybe I can clear my head a little. All right. I'll see you in a bit. Right on time. Yeah, as always. <laughs> I don't suppose you'd have any use for a little sweet potato pie? Oh, none whatsoever. <laughs> Let me have my hands on that pie. Oh, my own. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, oh. Nothing says autumn is almost here quite like a sweet potato pie. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, I own, I realized earlier when we talked on the phone that I probably didn't give you much choice about coming over here for dinner. I'm sorry if I was a little pushy. You know, I wondered about that. It's because of Dave Phillips. We had breakfast together. And lunch. And then he practically invited himself over for dinner. Oh, I tell you, he's trying to put on a good face. But you know, you can see clear through that man like a newly washed window. How did you enjoy yourself? Lunch was horrible. Well, I tried to keep him talking about it and tried to keep it light, but... Uh-huh, he'd listen for a little while and then he'd stare off into space. Uh-huh. Yes, that's the way it was at the clinic this afternoon. You did the right thing by inviting me. Well, all right, then. Thank you again for being here. <laughs> Come on, let's take this little baby into the oh, kitchen. Yes. Oh, well, now, tell me, how's Nancy? Well, physically, she's doing well. You scared me. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. Please, don't go. You know, when I was a kid, I used to come up here a lot. There's a game I used to play. You throw out a rock, and then using the rings as your guide, you throw another one to get it in the exact same spot. Well, it's been a long time. But if you get it, you get your wish. <laughs> you want to try You know, I've picked up the telephone about five times each day to call you ever since. I waited for that call. When I saw you out here at the end of the pier, I... I almost ran in the other direction. As it is, I almost didn't say anything. Maybe it would have been better if you hadn't. No. I owe you an apology. I'm sorry, Stacy. I hurt you deeply. And I'm sorry. You're just like a kid, you know that? Yeah. Okay, good. Then I'll tell you a story. What? Yeah, it's story time. Come on, sit down. I'm only doing this to humor you. That's fine. Just so you listen. Okay, well, uh, once upon a time... Oh, you meant a story story. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Once upon a time, there was a prince. Very nice guy. This well, guy. of course he was. He wouldn't be a prince if he wasn't. Who's telling this story? Sorry. That's right. Just stay out of it. <laughs> okay. Now, the prince, like I said, was a nice guy, but he couldn't find a princess. Believe me, he tried. Oh, I believe you. All right. Well, also, this prince had a grandmother who he liked very well. And when he wasn't feeling very well, he'd go over and talk to her because she'd make him feel real good. 
And um, one of the things that they'd talk about was why didn't he have a princess? But she would say, don't worry about it, because when you find her, you'll know it. She also said one day, um, when you find this princess, I want you to give her this. Don't look. Peter. I, no, hold on, Mother. I know, but I, I just... She said, it's magic. And only my true love can wear it. See, my grandmother and I were very close, and, and when she died, she left me this in her will. This was the ring that my grandfather gave my grandmother when they got married. She told me that, that I should give it to the girl that, that I fall in love with. Vicki, that's you. Peter, I can't... Just, just say, just... given it a lot of thought, and, uh, I love you, and I, I want to be with you. Give me your finger. See? Look at this. <laughs> That's a perfect fit. It's just like my grandma told me. Would it do me any good to ask why you're sorry, Gil? When I realized I had a responsibility to this child, I, I tried to deny it. But I couldn't. And when I found out that Amber couldn't either... And the surprise of a decade. The surprise of a lifetime. And what's your responsibility to Amber? I don't know that I have any responsibility to Amber. I just want to be a good father. And provide a good home. It's very commendable, I'm sure. This is a very confusing time for me. Make a wish. I wish that we could get out of here. I wish that you and I could just go away and start over someplace else. That's what I want. Gil! Uh, excuse me. Don't let her scare you out of here. I'm sorry, I can't help it. What were you two up to? Nothing. It didn't look like nothing to me. Well, that's what it was. Look, Gil, if we're going to make this thing work, we're going to have to give it the old college try. Ra, ra. We have to get back to the lodge. Sebastian needs us. I wish the same thing, Gil. That is the cutest little fuck. <laughs> Look, and I love the way he has his hand in a little fist like that. Look at that. Oh, oh he's growing so, so fast. Sweet. Hi. Peter. Hello. You know Vicki Lang? Hi, Mrs. Davis. Hi, Vicki. Uh, Vicki, uh, this is Jean's mom. Uh, this is Vicki Lang. Hello, sweetheart. Jean used to talk about you all the time. Oh, well, don't you believe a word of it? <laughs> hey, uh, Mom, I invited her for supper. I suppose that's okay? I, uh, I wanted him to call first, Mrs. Davidson, but he didn't think it was necessary. Oh, well, 
No, it's just that I'm surprised that, well, that you're allowed. Oh. All we had to do was ask. They said it was okay. <laughs> well, it's been one of those days, huh? Sebastian, how much longer are we going to have to wait for the happy couple to return? Any word from them yet? Well, I just got off the phone with Lee, called in from Cedar River. Said they've decided to, to uh, go on to the hotel, not to come back. He sends their apologies and says for us to stay as long as we like and to enjoy ourselves. Well, I think it was a smart decision. I agree. Of course, I'm a little sorry we didn't get all the photos we wanted, but I suppose we'll just have to take what we do have. Right, fellas? Amber. I've been meaning to talk to you about uh, setting up a photo session, a formal wedding portrait mm -hmm. over at your studio. Now, uh, maybe we can set it up sometime next week. I didn't hear a phone ring. Did you? <laughs>